on last week, my wife started a series, amen, and the series was entitled, I Am the Church. Glory to God. She taught a phenomenal word, a powerful word on last week's Sunday, amen, and she began this series, amen, talking and teaching on I Am the Church, amen. She opened up teaching on the Genesis and the logistics, amen, of the church, amen. She talked about how Amen. The church, amen, was concealed throughout the Old Testament. Amen. She really began to dissect that scripture and dissect the word of God in Matthew chapter number 16. Amen. And beginning at verse number 13, when Jesus began to have the, the, the discussion with the disciples and he asked them, saying, whom do men say that I am? And we know how the discussion went. They said, some say that thou art Elias. Some say that you are Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. And Jesus, amen, began to ask them. He said, yeah, that's what they say, but who do you say that I am? And it was Peter that responded and said that thou art the Christ, the Christos, the anointed one in the Greek, amen, the chosen one. You are the Christos. You are the Christ. You are the anointed one, amen. And he said, blessed art thou, Bar Simon Bar-Jonah. He said, for flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven, he told them, he said, he told Peter, he said, flesh and blood then revealed this unto you. Now, the first thing is important for us to understand as I begin to, amen, teach on or elaborate first on what she was teaching about last week. The first thing is important for us to understand about Christ is that Christ can really not, really Christ cannot be taught. I know we teach on Christ, but if you're going to really know him, it is important for us to understand that Christ really cannot be taught. He has to be revealed. He's revealed through his word. That's why sometimes you can teach Christ, amen, and, and, and you have different people sitting in the midst of your teaching, and some people don't get it because he have not been revealed to them. But you have some people that receive the revelation of who Christ is. So he says, he says, blessed art thou, um, Simon by Jonah, he said, for flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you. He said, but it was revealed to you, heaven revealed this unto you heaven revealed to you who i am so she began to teach on the logistics she talked about the the genesis of the church she taught about how the church was concealed in the old testament so when we look throughout the whole old testament throughout the old testament we see the church was not revealed there but it was concealed there so when you look at the church, the church was not there in the Old Testament. It was concealed in the Old Testament, if that makes sense. Amen. There were shadows, amen, and, and prophetic pictures of the church. But the church itself was not there. Because when we look at the scripture, the scripture says in Matthew chapter 16, once again, verse number 13 through verse 18, Jesus goes on and say, he says, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. And he says, upon this rock, upon your confession, he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. And that's the first time we see church mentioned in scripture. In Matthew chapter 16, that's the very first time we see the word church revealed. So she taught about the logistics, the, 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 the genesis of the church, the beginning of the church. We see it, the, the beginning of the church was over in Acts chapter number 2, where we know the Bible says that there came a sound from heaven, and, it came, and, and the wind came unto them, as, and the sound came unto them as a, mush, as a rushing mighty wind. Over in Acts chapter number 2, we see the birthing of the church. Are y'all with me? Amen. So she taught about the logistics and the beginning of the church. Amen. She also taught on the purpose, the purpose of the church and how its purpose is threefold. The church's purpose is threefold. So she taught on the exaltation of the church. Amen. The edification of the saints. Amen. And also the, evangel the, the evangelizing of the world. So its purpose, understand that the purpose of the church is the exaltation of God in the earth. So it's important for us first and foremost to understand that our purpose as the church, as the believers of God, is that we exalt him. Amen. That's our purpose, is that we exalt him. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Are y'all with me? So it's important for us to exalt him. So she taught about the exaltation of 
God in the earth. So that is the, the first, amen, the first purpose of the church. And then she taught on the edification. The purpose of the church is for the edification of the saints. We see that over in Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers for what? For the perfecting of the saint, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So she taught about the edification of the saints. And then also the purpose is to evangelize the world. The Bible says in Mark chapter number 16, verse number 15, it says, go ye into all the world. The first, the, the commandment, the commandment that Christ gives, he says, go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. So she taught on the threefold purpose of the church. Somebody say the threefold purpose. Amen. And then she went on to talk about the power of the church, the problems of the church, the persecution of the church, and the perseverance of the church. Amen. She taught, and I'm going to say that again, she talked about the power of the church, the problems of the church, the persecution of the church, and the perseverance of the church. She taught about how the church is resilient. Amen. How the church knows how to go through, how the church knows how to end, how to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So she taught on our resilience, how resilient the church is. So she taught on, amen, I am the church, I am resilient. That was last week. And then on Tuesday, Minister Sharon came and she taught, I am the church, I worship. Amen. Dr. Joyce taught about, I am the church, I'm resilient. Minister Sharon taught, I am the church, I worship on Tuesday night. Amen. She talked about the posture and the, pres and the position of the worshiper. She taught about the posture and the position of the worshiper. She talked about how important it is for us to understand that worship is not only what we do, but who we are. Worship is not just us lifting up our hands. It's not just us making sounds with our voice. It's not just us singing. It's not just us laying prostrate, telling God how good he is. So worship is not just what we do, but worship should be who we are. Amen. It's our life that we offer unto God every day. Your life alone ought to be a worship. So it's not just what you do, but it's who you are. I am a worshiper. And because I am a worshiper, I worship. I don't worship. Are y'all hearing me up in this house? So, so it's not when you understand who you are, that you are a worshiper. It's not really hard for you to worship. So she taught about the importance of understanding who we are. She taught, she taught on, amen, the importance of understanding that we are a worshiper. Worship is what I do. The Bible says in John chapter number 4, verse number 23, he says, For the Father seeketh such for those that would worship him in spirit and in truth. Romans, Paul says in Romans Chapter number 12, verse number 1, Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. So every day your body ought to be a living sacrifice. In another verse, he says, I die daily. Why do I die daily? Because my body body is a living sacrifice my body I give my body over to him everything that I am it belongs to God my hands worship my eyes worship my feet worship my body is a worship everything about me I am a worshiper turn to somebody and say this is who I am come on tell them this is who I am say I am a worshiper so he says that your bodies, uh, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So Dr. Joyce, once again, she taught about I am the church, I am resilient. Uh, Minister Sharon taught, I am the church, I am a worshiper. And I want to continue within the same vein today, and I want you to get your Bibles out and go with me to Hebrews chapter number 6, verse number 13 and 14. 
Hebrews chapter number 6, verse number 13 and verse number 14. And we're also going to look at Galatians chapter number 3, verse number 6 through 9, and one verse there, and that's going to be verse 14. I am the church. I am the church. Hebrews chapter number 6, very familiar passage of scripture. He says, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, surely blessings I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. I'm going to read that again. For, for God made Abram a promise. He made a promise to Abraham. Because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself and told him, surely blessings I will or I shall bless you. And multiplying, I'm going to multiply you. Galatians chapter number 3, verse number 6 through 9. It says, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore, they which are of faith, the same are the children, watch this, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Somebody said that sound like me. Say, say I was the heathen. Say that, say that, say that sound like me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. God would justify the heathen through faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then, watch this, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Verse 14 says that the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham, come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. I want to read verse 14 again. That the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That the blessing of Abraham. So everything that was on Abraham, God said through Jesus Christ, I'm putting it on the Gentiles. Every blessing that I proclaimed and promised to Abraham, blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply you. He said the same blessing that was on Abraham through Jesus Christ is now on you. I want to talk to you for a brief moment from the subject, and I want to remain within the same vein in talking about I am the church, but I want to talk about I am the church, I am blessed. I am the church, I am blessed. Come on, say that with me. I am the church, I am blessed. Y'all don't sound like you really believe it. Come on, say, I am the church. I am blessed. Come on, my money may be funny right now, and my change may be a little strange, but I am the church. I am blessed. Some of y'all, y'all need to say it so that hell can hear you. Open up your mouth and say, I am the church. I am blessed. Come on, say everything that's connected to me is blessed. Say, my money is blessed. My honey is blessed. My children are blessed. My family is blessed. My house is blessed. My lineage is blessed. Everything that's connected to me is blessed. I am. I am the church. I am blessed. So I'm going to talk to you for a brief moment about 
the blessing of God. Now, let me give you this this disclaimer because I would not be able to speak to every aspect of this topic. I'm not going to be able to cover every area of this topic because when you start talking about the blessings and the benefits that God has bestowed upon his people, it's important for us to understand first that they are very vast. Amen. When you start talking about the blessings, the blessings are, are, are limitless. Are y'all hearing me? Do, do you, you, you really don't even understand how blessed you really are. The, the blessings that God bestowed upon you, they're limitless. Somebody say, I am the church. I am blessed. Come on, say it again. Say, I am the church. I am blessed. And saints of God, it is, it is the divine will of God for you to understand who you are and whose you are. It's imperative. It's important. It's vital for you, especially in the time that we're in right now when everything seems to be collapsing. Everything, everybody, you know, so many people are going through and, you know, we're dealing with this pandemic and we're dealing with so many other things. In the midst of all that is going on, it is imperative, it is important, it's vital for you to understand who you are and whose you are. It's important for you to understand the transformation that took place when you were transitioned into the body of Christ. Are y'all hearing me? I'm going to say that again. It's important for you to understand the, the, the transformation that happened when you were transitioned into the body of Christ. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 17, he says, Therefore, if any man, watch this, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He says, all things are passed away. Watch this now. He says, if any man be in Christ, he says, he is a new creature. In other words, when you were transitioned into the body of Christ, there was a rebirth that took place. Are y'all hearing me? There was a, reali a, realign a realignment that, that took place. Are y'all hearing me? There was a reconstruction and a reconfiguration that took place. So he says, if you, if any man be in Christ, you were restructured. Hey Amen. You were, watch this, restored. And you say, well, how, how, how was I restored? When you were transitioned into the body of Christ, he that be in Christ is a new creature. What happened when you were transitioned into the body of Christ, there was a restoration. You say, well, what do you mean restoration? It simply means when you were transitioned, what happened was God took you back to the place where you were supposed to be before the Adamic fall. Are y'all hearing me? We talked about this a couple of weeks ago when we talked about when we talked about being in that um, place where Adam, in the place of Eden, amen, being in that blessed place, being in that place where God God predestined us to be even before the foundation of the world, before Adam fell, before Adam sinned. Remember, Adam didn't want for anything. Adam didn't desire. Everything that Adam needed was right at his hands. Are y'all hearing me? So he says, he that be in Christ is a new creature. I brought you back to the place where I predestined you to be even before the foundation of the world. There was a transformation that that took place. So he says, watch this. He says, all things are passed away. And this is important for us to understand that we have, that, that the old things that we used to deal with, the stuff that we used to struggle with, God said, those things are passed away. And behold, he says, all things have become new. And it's important for you and I to understand this, that when we were transitioned into the kingdom of God, when we were transitioned into the body of Christ the old things have passed away and behold he says all things have become new Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 20 he says that you have been bought with a price somebody say I've been bought with a price he says you have been bought with 
a price. He says over in Colossians chapter number 1, verse number 13, the apostle Paul says this. He says, you have been delivered from the powers of darkness, watch this, and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. You've been delivered. You were delivered out of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. So in other words, you no longer, you're, you're no longer governed by the rulership or the domination of Satan. You're no longer under his authority. You're no longer under his domain. I know sometimes he shows himself and he manifests himself in various ways, but it's important for you to understand that you're no longer under that dominion. He has no more authority over you. Are y'all hearing me? You, 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 you're, you're no longer under his reign. You're no longer under his control. You're no longer under his authority. You're no longer subjected to the sin, sickness, and depravity of the devil. Are y'all hearing me in this house? It's important for you to understand that, that as a believer, as being a part of the church, as being a part of the kingdom of God, you've been translated out of darkness into the kingdom. You've been translated out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. The kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. When we talk about the church, we talk about the kingdom. You cannot separate the church from the kingdom. When you talk about the church, you talk about the kingdom. When you talk about the kingdom, you talk about the church. God said, I translated you out. I pulled you out. I snatched you from out of darkness and translated you over into the kingdom of my dear son. Watch this. Every king first is important for you to understand that you are in the kingdom. Somebody shout, I'm in the kingdom. Say, I'm a part of the kingdom. And as being a part of the kingdom, that simply means that you are a citizen or a resident of the kingdom. You are a citizen or a resident of the kingdom. You're not just a member of the church, but you are a citizen of the kingdom. I'm part of the city. I'm part of the kingdom of God. And every kingdom, watch this, every kingdom have to have a king. You cannot have a kingdom without a king. Every kingdom have a king or a queen that reign and rule and dominate over it. We are a democracy here in the United States. But when you go over to the United Kingdom, you have Queen Elizabeth. Why? Because there is a kingdom. So every kingdom has to have a king ruling and dominating over it. Are y'all hearing me? And the revelation, watch this, and the reputation of the king, watch this, the reputation of the king is determined by the, the condition of its citizens. I'm going to say that again. The reputation of the king is determined by the condition of his citizen. In other words, if the citizens are struggling, then it's a reflection of the king's reign. Are y'all hearing me? If, if, if the citizens look bad, then the king look bad. If, if the citizens of the kingdom are impoverished, if the citizens of the kingdom are underprivileged, then it, uh, it is a reflection of the king. Because you are a part of the kingdom, he said you've been translated out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And God is the king that rule and reign and have authority over the kingdom that we're under. Are y'all hearing me? He says that I cannot allow myself to look bad. If, if you're impoverished, then that's a reflection on me. Because I'm your king. If, if you're struggling, then that's a reflection on me. Because you're part of my kingdom. If, 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 you, 
if, if you're broke, busted, and disgusted, then that's, that's a reflection on me. So God said, I'm not going to allow you to give me a bad reputation. So, so some of you, you're struggling right now, but it won't be for long. So some of you, you may be having financial challenges right now, but it won't be for long. Because you are part of a kingdom that has a king that will not allow you or your condition to make him look bad. So God will bless you not for your name's sake. He'll bless you for his name's sake because of who he is. Y'all ain't said nothing. Up in this house. Tell somebody, say, I am the church. Say, I am blessed. So it's important for you to understand this. It's important for you to understand who you are. It's important for you to understand who you are. It's important for you to understand that I'm part of a kingdom. And some of us, we've been in struggling. We've been struggling for so long because we don't know whose we are. Some of us, we've been struggling for so long because we know that we're a part of a ministry, but it's bigger than being a part of a ministry. Some of us, we, 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 we're part of, you know, of the church. And that's good. We're part, you know, we play our role. We have our positions and all of that. And we're faithful to it. But it's bigger than that. And watch this. And it's bigger than you. And God said, because of my reputation. That's why he told Abraham, he said, I swear by myself. I swear by my own name. He said, surely I'm going to bless you. Abraham, Abraham then crossed every T and dot every I. But he said, because of my namesake, because of who I am, I'm going to bless you. Because if you don't look good, I don't look good. So, 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 so I have to do what I can because you represent who I am. You, you going around telling people I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, I, I, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. God is my king. He rules. He reigns over me. I gave my life to Christ over 5, 10, 15 years ago. I've been walking with God. And God said, I'm not going to allow you. I can't allow you to be putting my name out there. And, 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 you don't, and you're not aligning. Your lifestyle does not align with who I am. Because I am the God of abundance. I am the God of more than enough. I hope, I, I ho I hope y'all catch me right here. I'm the God of more than enough. I own a cattle on a thousand hills. That's what my word says. And if you are mine, if you are part of the kingdom, if you are a citizen of this kingdom, then you have to represent this kingdom. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready to represent who he is. Y'all ain't say it right. Come on, turn to your neighbor and tell your other neighbor, I'm getting ready to represent who he is. Look, the Bible says this in John chapter number 3, 3 John. 3 John, 3 John, 3 John verse 2. 3 John verse 2. The scripture says beloved. It opens up with saying beloved. Beloved is, is, it denotes that he's talking to the believer. You, you don't call nobody the beloved whom, you, whom you're not connected to. He, he says, beloved, watch this. He says, I wish above all things. We know the scripture. He says, I wish above all things that thou is may prosper and be in health. He said, I wish above everything else, everything else that you would prosper. Now, when you look at that word prosper in the Greek, that word prosper simply means to succeed in reaching. <laughs> to watch this, to succeed. Well, when I, when I was looking at this, when I was studying this, I got so blessed. To succeed in reaching. So whatever you're reaching for, this probably ain't going to excite everybody because everybody ain't reaching. This is for those that are reaching. He, he said, every, he, I want you to succeed in everything that you're reaching. Some of y'all, y'all reaching to, to own your own home. He said, I want you to succeed in everything that you're reaching for. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm reaching. I'm stretched out. Come on. Turn to the tell them, I'm stretched out. I'm really, I'm reaching. I'm reaching for a business. I'm reaching. I'm reaching. So he says, I wish above everything. That you may as prosper. 
That word prosper simply means to succeed in business affairs. To succeed in business affairs. So you that have a business, you, you that have a business down in your spirit. He said, I'm praying, my prayer is that you would prosper in your business affairs. God is not intimidated by you being wealthy. Are y'all hearing me? God is not intimidated about you being blessed financially. Are y'all hearing me? So it means to succeed in business affairs. Watch this. It means also nothing missing, nothing lacking. So when he says, I wish above all things that you would prosper. He says, I wish above all things that there be nothing missing. I wish above all things that there will be no lack. Everything you need, you have it. And not only that, but the Bible says in Psalms 34 and verse 7, I believe it is, he says, he says that if you delight yourself also in me, he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. So not just lacking in the things that you need, but also lacking in the things you desire. Are y'all hearing me? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm getting ready to represent. The Bible says this in Proverbs, and I want you to be writing these scriptures down and go back and read them. He says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 22, he says, watch this. He says, the blessing of the Lord, the blessing. You know, sometimes folk are trying to make you feel like, you know, that because you saved, it's not the will of God for you to be blessed. Humility, you know, to be humble, you should be broke. You should not have nice things. You should not drive nice things. You should not live in a nice home. You know, you need to be, you need to humble yourself and live, you know, in a, no, 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 no. Listen, God, this is not, that is not even scripture. Are y'all hearing me? That ain't even the scripture. You can be saved and still be blessed. Are y'all hearing me? You can be saved. You can be blessed and still saved. You can live in the overflow and still be saved. You can have financial blessing. Every need can be met. You can live in the, have the overflow, have more than enough. And st- this is the will of God concerning you. Turn to somebody and say, this is the will of God concerning me. So Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 22, he says, watch this. He says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. The blessing. So we talked about how I am the church, I am blessed. I am the church, I am blessed. So when he talk, so when we talk about the blessing, he says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Maketh have an E-T-H, which simply means to continue. It is a reoccurring cycle. Are y'all hearing me? It continues. Are y'all hearing me? So he says, the blessing of the Lord will continue to add riches on you. I wish I had a church in here this morning. We'll, We'll continue to add blessings or riches on you. Watch this. And add no sorrow. Are y'all He said, the blessing. So when you say, I'm blessed. I'm a part of the kingdom. The scripture declares that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and add no sorrow. Can can I stop and prophesy right here over this house? Somebody's sorrow is getting ready to shift. So somebody, you've been dealing with sorrow, but I hear God say that your sorrow is getting ready to shift. Some of you, you've been sorry because of your finances, but God is getting ready to make the blessing overflow and overtake you. Are y'all hearing me? Some of you, your sorrow is getting ready to shift. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, my sorrow is getting ready to shift. I'm getting ready Come on, shout, shout. I'm getting ready to live in the overflow. Y'all don't believe that because y'all ain't saying it like you believe it. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm getting ready to live in the overflow. Watch this Proverbs. Proverbs said, and addeth no sorrow. Then Paul comes in Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 19. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Paul says in Proverbs 4, 19, he says, but my God. He said, my God, he makes it personal. Lay your hands on yourself and say, my God. He said, my God, he said, he shall supply all of your riches or all of your needs according to the riches and glory. He said that the God that we serve, 
shall supply all of your needs, every need that you have. He says, God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Let me tell you something. When you, when, you, when you confess and you say and you know that you are blessed, let me tell you something. According to this scripture here, the blessed as the blessed, you have access to unlimited resources. You have access because you are a part of the kingdom. I think I'm going to have to talk to this side of the church. Because you are a part of the kingdom, you have access. You have unlimited access to resources. Are y'all hearing me? You have unlimited, everything you need. He said, God will supply. Are y'all hearing me? Turn to your name and tell your name, but God is getting ready to supply my needs. I, got, I have I have, I have some needs. I have some needs. I have some needs. And God is getting ready to supply. As a matter of fact, he's not just going to supply, but he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask or think. God is getting ready to cause me to walk in the overflow. I wish I had a church. Maybe the church is online. God is getting ready to cause you to walk in the overflow. God is getting ready to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Why? Because you are the blessed of God. God. He says over in Deuteronomy chapter number 8, as I hurry to a close in chapter number 8, verse number 18, he says there, he says that God, it is God, God, God giveth you power. God giveth you power as the church, as the ecclesia, as the called out ones, as those that have been anointed and called and predestined by God. Those that have the hand of God rested on you. He says, listen, he says, I'm giving you power to gain wealth. Are y'all here? Me. He says, I'm giving you power to get wealth. Some of you, you have innovative ideas flowing through your mind. And some of you, you just sweep stuff aside because you say, I know that just can't be. But God is saying, I'm giving you power to get wealth. That business that's been traveling through your mind, walking through your mind every night. You hear it going on in your mind. You wake up and have that thought. I should start it, but then you say, I really don't have no money. I should go for it, but I really don't. I really can't give you. You, you talk yourself out of the blessing that God has for you. But God said, I'm giving you power now. I'm giving you the ability. I'm giving you the authority. I'm giving you the green light to gain wealth. Are y'all hearing me? God is not intimidated. And I'm going to say this again because it's important for you to know that God is not intimidated by you being wealthy. The Bible says that he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his saints. He said, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. If God could just shift your mind, your way of thinking, if he could shift your mentality, if he can move you in your way of thinking, thinking that, you know, this is it. This is going to always be it shift you into thinking that you know that, 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 that you're comfortable where you are. No, God has so much more for you. And let me say this real quick. God has so much more for this church. This is not it. Are y'all hearing me? This is not it. And we're talking about we are the church. Let me tell you something. If you are a part of this church, if you are a part of Committed to Christ International Ministries, if you are going to be a part of CTCIM, it is destined. It's been predestined for you to prosper. The word that comes across this podium, the word that comes across this pulpit declares that you shall prosper. It's your birthright. Are y'all hearing me? Because you are part of the kingdom. Because you're under this prophetic and apostolic anointing. It is the will of God for you to prosper. Somebody lay your hands on yourself and turn to your neighbor and say, it's me, it's me, it's me. I shall prosper. I am blessed. I shall grow. I shall increase. It's not the will of God for you to be stagnant and stuck. It's not the will of God for you to be struggling. It's not the will of God for you to rob Peter to pay Paul. The devil is a lie. And I want to say in this house, I want to serve the devil. Notice that after today, things are getting ready to change. So turn to your name and tell your neighbor, I feel a shift that's about to take. Says, God said, I give you, I give you, I give you power to get wealth. He says, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul, 
Your soul is your mind. Your soul is your intellect. Your soul is the seat of your emotions. Your soul is the way you think. He said, I need your mind to prosper. I I need your mind to go before you. I need you to change the way you're thinking. For, For the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And some of us, we're in a rut because of how we've been thinking. But if you can allow God to get a grip on your mind and change the way you've been thinking. Paul says, I think myself happy. If you can change the way you've been thinking. You know, throughout the years, you know, we've been taught. You know how we've been taught coming up. You know, that, that you know, the broker you are, you know, you, you're humble. You know, all of this, all of this foolishness. But when we look at the scripture, the scripture contradicts what had been taught to us. Because when we look at the scripture, we see the scripture full of men and women that was prosperous. And yet the Bible says that God loved them. Abraham was not broke. Are y'all hearing me? Abraham, let me say it like this. Abram was not broke. Job was not broke. Are y'all hearing me? Job was not broke. And Job, I know we look at Abraham and we see him over in Genesis. And then we look at Job, and Job is way in the middle of the Old Testament. But when you actually do the study of Abraham and Job, you'll find that Job was actually the great-grandson of Abraham. So, so, so that generational blessing that was on Abraham came down to Job. We read over in, in, in Galatians that because now we were, when we were heathens, we didn't have access to that blessing. But because of Jesus Christ, we were engrafted in two. Are y'all hearing me? We, we were engrafted in two. So when, so when the blessing was coming from Abraham down through the generations and through the lineage, it fell on David, which was also part of the lineage. It fell on Ruth. All of them was part of the lineage on Solomon. It went throughout the generations, generation after generation after generation. And then it stopped at Malachi because it didn't have nowhere to go. But Jesus stepped in. Are y'all hearing me? Jesus being the seed of Abraham, the seed of David. Are y'all hearing me? The son of man, he stepped in. And when he stepped in and he died on the cross, are y'all hearing me? When he became a curse, we became the blessed. So when he talks about there was an exchange in the New Testament where he says that there were we been translated into the kingdom, that word translated simply means there was an exchange. When you look at that word translated in the Greek, it simply means there was an exchange. We that was cursed, Jesus that was blessed, when he hung on the tree, he became the cursed, and we became the blessed. And he engrafted us in to the Abrahamic covenant. So when God told Abraham that I'm going to bless your seed and your seed seed, it was about to pass us over. But Jesus said, not so. I want them to be a part of, I want them to be a part of this Abrahamic covenant that God told Abraham that he's going to bless him and he's going to multiply him. Now, because you are a part of the church, because you are a part of the kingdom, the same blessing that rests on Abraham, the same multiplication that God told, spoke to Abraham about, the prophetic promise that God gave Abraham is also to you and to you and to you and to you. And can I prophesy right here? Can I stop and prophesy right here? And not many days hence you getting ready to receive or see the manifestation of the promise that God promised Abraham. You getting ready to see the increase and the multiplication. You getting ready to receive the overcome, the overflow. Are y'all hearing me? You getting ready to y'all lay saying nothing. The blessing that God spoke over in Deuteronomy where he told the children of Israel where he said the blessing, I'm going to bless you. Are y'all hearing me, where he commanded the blessing that anointing is in this house right now I hear the Holy Ghost say command the blessing and I command the blessing in this house I wish somebody would lift your hands because you get ready to testify about the blessing of the Lord are y'all hearing me God is getting ready to turn that thing around somebody 
and open up your mouth and give God a praise. I said open up your mouth and give God a praise. So the same. The same. Don't. Don't. Don't be. Don't be bamboozled. Don't be, don't, don't be hoodwinked about what you're going through right now. This is temporary. This is just for your making. This is just to prove you. This is just to see where your heart is. Deuteronomy chapter number 8, God told the children of Israel. He said, I led thee these 40 years. I led you through the wilderness to prove what was in your heart. Whether you will serve me, whether you will be committed to me. So I have to put you through this season of preparation before your elevation. Because preparation always precedes elevation. And he said, before I elevate you, before I put you in that place that I predestined you to be, before I give you the business, before I give you the wealth and the income, are y'all hearing me? Before I give you the job, before I cause overflow to happen in your life, I, will, I had to see what you would do with what you had. Because, you know, if you, if you faithful in struggle, you will sure be faithful in the blessing. Are y'all hearing me? Somebody say, I've been faithful in the struggle. <laughs> Come on, tell them I've been faithful in the struggle. And I feel my blessing getting ready to happen. I wish I had a church up in here. You ought to open up your mouth and shout, I've been faithful in the struggle. I've been doing hardness as a good soldier. I tied when I didn't have it. Y'all ain't said nothing. I gave when I didn't have to give. He said, had to see what was in your heart, whether you would be faithful, whether you'll be consistent. Because if you can tithe with $20, you can tithe with $100. You can tithe even when the creditors is calling you. You can tithe when your car note is behind. You can, you can tithe when you're behind in your bills, but you still say, I got to give God his. When you, can, when you can be faithful in little, Jesus said you'll be faithful in much. So I had to try you in your little. And God said, I've seen you be faithful with little. You stretched. You stretched. I don't know exactly who this is for, but I feel this in my spirit. You stretched. Financially, you were stretched. You gave, you tied. You was faithful. You made, you made, you called and made arrangements. I don't know who this is for. You called and made arrangements so that you can tie. You call creditors and made arrangements so that you can be faithful to God. I got to call them. I, I got because I, I know this can pay this, but I, I'm just not going to rob God. I, the devil is a lie. I've been tithing for years. I've been tithing. I'm, I'm going to continue to be faithful. I'm going to continue to be faithful because I'm believing God. And God said, because of your consistency, Watch this. And because of who I am. See, what you did aligned with who he is. He can only be king when you subject yourself to him. The queen of England is still She's the queen, but she's not my queen. It's all, she'll, she'll only become my queen if I go over there and become a part or a citizen of her kingdom and come under her reign. You have been consistent a consistent citizen. And because of your consistency, and because you made up in your mind that I understand you, you probably didn't even realize that you were doing kingdom business. You probably, 
You probably didn't know the depth of the things that you were doing as being a part of the church. You, you were advancing the kingdom. And God said, because you advance the kingdom, I'm going to advance you. Oh, God help me. Because you advance the kingdom. And some of you, it wasn't even your tithing. It was just your consistency, your life. As Minister Sharon so, so, so eloquently talked about on Wednesday, your life being a worship. Because you laid your life down for him, you advance the kingdom. He said, because you advance the kingdom, I'm going to advance you. Because you promoted the kingdom, I'm going to promote you. See, some of y'all, y'all got to catch me because right now I, I, I'm, I'm prophetic and you need to catch this word because it's a prophetic word. Because some of you, you're looking at where you are right now, but you got to go beyond where you are right now. When, when, when Moses spoke to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter number 28, he told them, and all these blessings are going to overtake you. He said, blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the field, blessed shall you be going in, blessed shall you be going out. He said, God is commanding the blessing on you. But watch this. When Moses was commanding or prophetically speaking that over their lives, he was speaking to them while they were in yet the wilderness. So it was easy for them to look around and say, well, I hear you declaring the blessing, but when I look, I'm in the wilderness. All of this sand and dirt and, and cactus and nothing is growing here. Listen, they didn't realize it, but they were at the precipice of a radical militant change that was about to happen, that was about to occur. The blessing, the place that God predestined for them. They were at the precipice. They were at the brink of transitioning over into the blessed place. They were going over into the promised land. Are y'all hearing me? And just as the children of Israel back in that day, so are you today. You may say, Bishop, I'm in a wilderness place. Everything is dry. Nothing is growing. My money is crazy. Everything is just, just out of line, out of whack. I'm struggling here, struggling there. I really, you know, I really can't even articulate all the stuff that I'm dealing with. God is saying, I know you're going through, but God is saying that you are blessed. God is saying that the blessing is getting ready to overtake you. God is saying that increase in multiplication is a, it's knocking at your door. Are y'all hearing me? God is saying change is about to happen. God is saying you're getting ready to represent the kingdom. You're getting ready to represent who he is. Lift your hands. I'm done. I'm not out of work, but I am out of time. I want to pray over this house. I want to pray over everybody that's watching me online. Because I declare, I decree, I prophesy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that testimonies is getting ready to come forth. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that you have just crossed over into the place of I have not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart the things that God has in store for you. I prophesy that you have just transitioned over to the place of increase and multiplication. You have not even began to see what you're about to see. God gave you a glimpse of what he's going to do, but he didn't show you the whole picture. What God is getting ready to do is beyond your comprehension. If he would have showed you everything, your faith, you didn't have enough faith to really, to, you didn't have enough faith to really receive everything that God is going to do. But God is getting ready to blow your mind. He just showed you a glimpse.